Okay, we're back, we're live, we're here in Kauai, the Kauai Marriott. Uh, I'm here with Mina Morita, a <laughs> former chair of the PUC, a former legislator, and a speaker at this uh, fabulous conference, the Kauai Marriott, the Kauai Energy Conference, organized by the County of Kauai and the County uh, Economic Development mm -hmm. Board, uh, including Mina Morita, by the way. I, I know you were a part no, of organizing. I, I, I just sit on the uh, planning committee, that's all. Okay, we're meeting a lot of very interesting <laughs> people here today. And on the phone, uh, as, as our regular arrangement, uh, we have the other M in the MMMM. That stands for Mina, Marco, me on Monday. Okay, four. right, four okay. M's. Four <laughs> M's. Uh, Marco, and you join us from ProVision Solar and Hilo. Welcome to the show, of course, live. And I have to say, I'm looking at the two of you, of my favorite people, and you two look marvelous. <laughs> oh, thanks. I <laughs> got. <laughs> okay. Marvelous trio are reunited. <laughs> <laughs> of course, wherever we go. So anyway, uh, let's let's talk first about the conference because we're here for the conference. I mean, can you talk about this conference? What's going on here today? Right. So um, the the conference is um, hosted by the Kauai Economic Development Board, and we opened the morning with two keynote speakers, David Bissell, the CEO of Kauai Island Utility Cooperative, and Kate Gordon, who's um, with the Pulse, she's a senior fellow, I believe, at the Paulson Institute, and working on making the business case um, to address climate change. But let me, I forgot the most important part of the morning um, activities. The mayor of Kauai signed a county proclamation um, basically stating that uh, the county of Kauai will commit to the Paris Agreement. So I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about it now. The county of Kauai, little, little Kauai, mm -hmm. 80 miles off Honolulu, yeah. and it signs uh, the Paris Accord. I yep. love it. Yeah, this, that's just, this is perfect for Kauai, isn't well, it? Well, <laughs> I think you know. I, I again, you're going to hear um, I, from the other counties, Oahu, Maui, and the Hawaii Island, and also you know a lot of people heard from the governor um, during the Hokulea ceremonies of the commitment to keep to the the principles of the of Paris Agreement. Yeah, he's great. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a, he's a great mayor, a, a courageous mayor. I really like everything he does, yeah. including. The fact that he sang a song at some length this morning. Yeah. You know that song? What song is that? Uh, I don't know. He probably made it up. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good about turning the lights on. And so th it, he covered all the, you know, the the idea of this conference in that in that song. And he has a pretty good voice, I might add. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. You, you want to sing a song now, Mina? Uh, I don't have that voice. <laughs> but <laughs> well, Marco does. <laughs> Marco, do you want to sing a song? Uh, Tested your patience long enough, but uh, in terms of singing my version of one enchanted evening from South Pacific. <laughs> I remember that. But I think one of the most important th points that the mayor made was, you know, the engagement of the younger generation in um, um, addressing uh, monumental problems uh, or mo monumental challenges like climate change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those kids at uh, Kauai Community College, they were, they were so vital, and they're so on it, and that was very nice. They were part of the ceremony, I understand, um, mm -hmm. for the, the signing of the proclamation. Right, and, and, and you know, um, I don't believe those were college students, those were high school oh, students. Oh, pardon me. And they were all women. I didn't notice that. <laughs> there was a lot of girl power there. <laughs> a lot of girl power. They were sitting right next to us. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's a lot of vitality here, and a lot of people came over from Honolulu, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of people from Kauai, mm -hmm. too, and uh, including you know, people who you know, are consumers of electricity yeah. rather than in the industry. So it, it's, a, it's a real mix, and it's a yeah. very uh, you know, exuberant kind of conference, I think. Yeah. Nothing like being on Kauai. Mm -hmm. I guess you can say nothing like being on the Big Island. But Kauai has special mm -hmm. merit. Yeah. So anyway, let's um, you know let's talk about uh, what we are, um, what we hopefully will expect to learn. You were on one of the panels this morning, Mina. Mm -hmm. What did you talk about? That was about maintaining a co rather limiting costs or maintaining a, um, a reasonable cost for electricity. Well, how to use data, how to make data your friend. But before we get into that, um, the, this conference has three tracks. Mm. 
and um, the track that I was moderating was the energy savings track. Um, the second track is on transportation and really looking at what the transportation system will look like on Kauai in the future. And the third track was um, the low carbon track and, and uh, the 21st, um, 21st infrastructure. 21st century. 21st century yeah. infrastructure. infrastructure which is so dealing, important. yeah, dealing with uh, the electricity sector, the transportation sector, and we were really fortunate to have an airline perspective with the participation Hawaiian of Airlines. Hawaiian Airlines. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Art Para. Yeah. Yes. Very good guy. He's mm -hmm. going to be in our show. Oh, great. Weeks. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. So um, you know what I mean? What's interesting about this is that it's not the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. This conference has new ideas floating around. This conference has uh, an orientation toward, for example, making peace with climate change. We can't solve it, but at least we can recognize well, the reality and deal with it. Well, I think the most important um, aspect of this con conference is, you know, really viewing climate change from the business perspective, the risk. Uh, the the uh, opportunities that might be out there. It, it's really rethinking your biz business strategy to be successful in the future. Yeah, I, there's a lot of there's a lot, and, and I talked to uh, Kate uh, Gordon both on the record and off the record uh -huh. about that connection, the business connection, the business case, and uh, I think there's some really fresh new ideas, important ideas. Uh -huh. It's about exactly how does how do the, does the community engage with the federal government these days. It's a little different. Mm -hmm. um, how does the community um, you know, come up with business arrangements and business incentives, and how do businesses conduct themselves? Mm -hmm. And it is an analysis, this community here in Kauai, the Garden Island, yes. about big time business. We're talking mm -hmm. about multinationals here in Kauai, uh, and how they have a, not only a responsibility, but a capability mm -hmm. of actually dealing with climate change and dealing with clean energy in a way that maybe they haven't before, and in a way that government may mm -hmm. not be able to, right. you know? Right. We had, there was a, I, I told Kate, there was a professor of, of business finance from Harvard, came out here a year or two ago, and uh, she made the point to me, which I will not forget, is that um, you know, power is a function of money. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at today's world, the amount of money that passes between governments is nothing compared to the money that passes between global multinational corporations. Right. So if you want to evaluate the real power to get things done, it isn't in government anymore. Mm -hmm. It's in global multinational right. corporations. You know, she made an important point about, you know, that the clean energy transformation is really a capital substitution strategy. You know, where we're going to put our capital, the best use for the capital, and where, especially in the electricity sector, we were dependent on, in the past, dependent on the utilities making those kinds of investments. Now the investments are being made on both, both sides of the meters. Yeah, this so. is, that's exactly what she said when mm -hmm. I talked to her. Mm -hmm. You know, so Marco, you know, this is different than the rest of the state, isn't it? I mean, Kauai seems to have a special sauce. I also uh, talked to uh, your friend Mina Ten uh, Bruggengate, mm -hmm. who used to be a um, tech reporter for the Honolulu well, Advertiser. Uh, yeah, Advertiser, the science writer. Yeah, mm -hmm. science writer, and he was the chair of KIUC. He still is the chair. And vice chair. Mm -hmm. He's going to oh, vice, vice chair. chair. Oh, okay. We're also going to have him <laughs> on the program, and I mean, he, and he talked about the internal culture, of the mm -hmm. management. Yes. You know, and I told him that, um, you know, manage, good management builds good neighbors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably find that on Kauai. So, a question I put to you, Marco: How, how, from your vantage in Hilo, how is this different? You know, between, say, Hilo, in fact, how is it different between the co-op that you contemplate or the existing Hawaiian electric arrangement that, you know, exists today and life in, in Kauai? And what, what can we learn about exchange? And you mentioned before the show began that there was a very interesting collaboration between Alan Oshima and David Bissell from KIUC just yesterday uh, in the Star Advertiser. Shot. Uh, I mean, uh, HIEC, we're, we're a bona fide uh, 501c12 under IRS uh, statutes, and uh, that said, maybe we're, we're still more of a wannabe co-op than a real one in terms of uh, we don't have generating assets or infrastructure, and uh, we're still waiting uh, 
patiently for the opportunity to uh, to see if there's a willing seller on the part of Hawaiian Electric companies to uh, see about uh, parting with uh, Hawaii Electric Light Company so that we can go from a wannabe co-op to a real co-op and join our brothers and sister friends at the Koi Island Utility Co-op that have been making wonderful things happen for the past, what, 15 or so years. So, yeah, there was a very good piece, a collaborative piece between um, Alan Oshima, president of Hawaii Electric, and uh, my friend David Bissell, president of KIUC that was in the Star Advertiser yesterday, an op-ed piece, and essentially leading with the, uh, this, uh, the, the noting that despite what President Donald Trump may do in terms of backing away our uh, commitment to uh, to reducing our carbon footprint and greenhouse gases that uh, the electric utility companies here, of which there are, of course, only two, the Hawaiian Electric Companies, Hiko, Helco, Miko, and Kat, you see that they're full speed ahead and going as fast uh, and cost efficiently and cost effectively as we can to more and more renewables. And some of the, the numbers they cite in the piece, I think, are just uh, really laudatory, uh, including uh, KIUC going up from 9% renewables uh, a bare nine years ago to uh, 40% now, and uh, the Hawaiian Electric companies being 26% of uh, their total generation coming from uh, renewables with uh, the Big Island here, uh, J. Ignacio and his team leading the pack with 54% renewable energy uh, as far as generation in 2016. and. Uh, and that uh, you know, it's, it's great to see uh, Alan and David uh, collaborating on this piece, and uh, and that you know we're we're all hands on deck and uh, and doing this in a collaborative and uh, cooperative fashion to uh, to try to reduce our uh, fossil fuel uh, con consumption here in the state uh, as, as quickly and as cost effectively as we can. No, well, okay. So going back to the earlier part of my question, how does it look? From, from Hilo, I mean, how, how would you, uh, you know, compare life in Hilo with life in Kauai, if you can do that? And if you can't, Mina will. <laughs> well, there, I mean, some substantial uh, challenges here at the Big Island that, uh, that we're dealing with here that uh, the rest of the state, uh, the other islands really have to deal with less than that, of course. Uh, number one is the substantial geographic territory that the Big Island uh, has. I mean, as we've all seen those maps of the, uh, the outline of the Big Island can fit all the other islands Combined. So there's the challenges of uh, substantial lengths of uh, transmission distribution here and a low, typically low urban concentration, uh, which uh, makes us very different than, of course, much of Oahu as far as fewer utility customers per square unit of, of area. So uh, there's just uh, more, more challenges here, uh, but, you know, in terms of our, our working with, uh, with KIUC, we've you know, cooperate, uh, that co-ops cooperate with each other, and, uh, you know, I'm very interested in keeping up with what's going on on, on Kauai in terms of the progress that they're, they're making. I don't know how, how responsive I'm being to your, your exact No, question. no, I think, I think you are. Uh, but let me, let me take a moment and say that uh, we've had conferences in Maui, we've had conferences in Kauai. It's time for us to have conferences in the Big Island, and I hope you set that up. For now, however, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back in one minute. Uh, this is M Mina, Marco, and me on Monday about energy. You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come laying on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You can talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself
Okay, we're back, we're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and this is our Monday show at noon. It's an energy show called Mina, Marco, and me on Monday <laughs> about energy. <laughs> and we travel the world and do this. And right now we're in Kauai. We're in the Kauai Marriott Resort Hotel near Lihui, um, where there is a, the Kauai Energy Conference going on, and it's really fabulous. And um, Mina is a speaker here, and Marco is interested from uh, Hilo, where he joins us by phone uh, from ProVision Solar in Hilo. And we're talking about the conference, but all the issues that flow out of the conference. And I'd like to address the issue that uh, Mina was talking about in one of the breakout sessions just a few minutes ago. She's a speaker in that session. And I'm talking about managing costs. And you've always been very interested in that because you know it's important that we right. do, don't do violence to the economy. Well, like I said, you know, the, the, the whole clean energy strategy is one of capital substitution. And, you know, in deploying that capital, you want to make sure that it's effective, efficient, and uh, increases your productivity. And, and so those are, you know, some of the topics that we're hitting on. Basically, you know, how do you take information? How do you do the analysis um, to make good, solid business de decisions that ultimately um, affect your bottom line or improve your, your bottom line and meet your mission. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's very interesting because you know, this is sort of a, a new emphasis, if you will. Huh? It's mm -hmm. a new emphasis. It's making the business case. Yeah. It's taking a look at it from the lens of, of business. Uh -huh. And um, you know, government has trouble doing that. Yeah. Uh, but the business community and the people who focus on um, you know, business analyses have less trouble doing it, and mm -hmm. that's one of the big threads here, big, big thread in your panel anyway, in the, in the energy uh, conference in Kauai. So I, I, think, um, I think we're in a new time, don't you? Right. Well, you know, our two speakers this morning were excellent. We had um, Michael Chang, and you might Hawaiian be... Electric. Yeah, so Michael Chang is the customer service development Oh, I forget his title, but it's, you know, he's focused on, on meeting the customer's Under needs. Under Jim Alberts there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, in the customer service area. And, you know, he mostly uh, spoke about uh, data analytics, you know, and not only taking your meter information, but also taking different sources of data, you know, to get a complete um, uh, view of your of your business. And then I had Scott Bly, who's the senior project manager for Aqua Engineers. Aqua Engineers is a Kauai-born company that operates statewide now, and they're 100% employee-owned. But with Scott, um, you know, really demonstrating the business culture to be able to embrace uh, data analytics and making and using that to uh, drive, help drive your productivity and profitability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really, I didn't see the whole panel. We got footage from some of the panel. We took mm -hmm. footage from all the panels and um, we put that on uh, OC16, which is uh, uh, now known as, as Spectrum, Spectrum 12 okay. and, and, and 1012 is what yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, but that'll be on in a, in a week or two. We're gonna have footage from the whole conference. So, uh, Marco, I mean, uh, does that resonate with you? Is that discussion happening elsewhere in the state? Uh, candidly, I've been kind of uh, missing in action some in the past two and a half months, Jay, as I've been teaching uh, my energy politics course at beautiful University of California, Santa Cruz. So I'm just kind of getting uh, immersed again uh, with my head fully wrapped around about all the uh, energy uh, matters and issues that are happening before us. Uh, right now, you know, and, and being a small business owner focusing on rooftop solar, uh, my, uh, my mind is uh, pondering two essentially existential questions as uh, we're seeing the numbers significantly down for uh, this year so far, the first five plus months of this year in terms of PV permitting across the, uh, the state. And that is, uh, to what extent is there still uh, much of a new market for those homeowners and business owners who've yet to go PV uh, to to still do so. Uh, that's the existential question number one, and, and there's no definitive answer to that, obviously, at this point. And existential question number two is more kind of a micro question from um, one's business perspective, and in this case, my, my business perspective, which is to what extent or uh, is a, what size of the piece of the 
occupy of the remaining PV market uh, can my company, can my business, ProVision Solar, hope to, uh, hope to capture? So there's kind of the big macro questions, which conferences like this and then the Verge conference on Oahu is going to be uh, starting in the next week or so as well. They answer kind of the, the 50,000 foot question, questions and issues, uh, and then uh, folks like me who are working as hard as we can with our dedicated staff to try to generate enough revenue in order to pay bills on a timely basis and meet payroll and so forth in terms of a, a very challenging transition that we are undergoing here on the state, the first in the country, going from an export-based uh, interconnect uh, regime mm -hmm. where you can provide surplus PV power to the grid and get some type of credit for it, uh, moving from that type of model, which we've had for 16, 17 years, to one that's uh, self-consumption, self-supply, which uh, where the grid is not uh, accepting, the utility company is not accepting surplus power. So, you know, it's, it's kind of the, the betwixt and between the more uh, global macro uh, techno issues and then uh, running a business and trying to stay profitable and try to, try to maintain your revenue stream so you can pay your bills on time. I sense a quickening, don't you? Uh, I mean, uh, so we were all dampened by what happened with uh, NextEra and it cast a shadow during that long period of 19 months and thereafter. And now it's, uh, oh gee, it's almost a year later, isn't it? It is a year later. Well, and, I, and finally, I think that shadow is lifting. Finally, I think there's new, new energy, new, new confidence, uh, new, new optimism. Do you feel that? Do you feel that, Mina? Well, I, I hope that what we can take away from this is, um, you know, what we're really striving for right now in order to make rates affordable is a more, I think the more realistic view is not a renewable energy future right now, but a low carbon future. So how do we do a variety of things to, to move towards uh, lower carbon emissions, but keep it affordable? Um, and, and so there are a lot of complex issues that we're gonna have to be facing um, soon, and one is rate design. So how do we have the proper incentives? Um, you know, again, exponential growth of rooftop solar was, is not sustainable, mm -hmm. and it's very expensive, um, and especially given the capacity factor of, of, of solar panels. So, you know, it's really drilling down into these hard issues and using, now. And using technology, and uh, Marco alluded to that, using technology to get, gain data, to gather data about how it works, mm -hmm. how the community comes together on, the, on this level of exchanging uh, electricity, um, and, um, you know, and analyze that mm -hmm. and use predictive analytics on yep. it. So we can actually make a system that's statewide and that, that fits the purpose. It's not, it's not easy. And then you crank in one more thing I'd like to discuss before we close, and that is transportation. Yeah. <clears throat> There's been a, a fair amount of discussion, Mar uh, Marco, about transportation here um, and about electric vehicles. In fact, Stan Osserman is here, Mr. Hydrogen, mm -hmm. uh, and there has been some discussion about what, how do we incentivize electric vehicles and how do electric vehicles play into the grid and all this. And I, I haven't seen so much you know, sort of integrated discussion about that where it's sort of part of the landscape now, that yeah. you can't discuss renewable energy without discussing transportation. <laughs> well, well, and I think, you know, this is uh, where Kauai plays a, um, a leading role because they're trying to approach transportation from a planning viewpoint and getting all the different partners in transportation to collaborate, especially in the planning, because the future for transportation isn't just electric vehicles. You know, I, I, again, with the onset of autonomous cars, vehicles, I mean, we're hearing more, I think the, you know, the pace on that is sort of accelerating. If you talk to any auto manufacturer now, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not true. It, it's, you know, the focus is on autonomous vehicle. Yeah, yeah. And so when, when you're talking about it, it's like, what's the infrastructure platform that will support that? You know, uh, you know how are we planning for the future in um, looking at the bigger picture of transportation where it's multimodal, um, you know, you, you work where you live, so you don't have these um, 
commute costs, and you have vehicles when you need them. Right, not know? all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's been an important discussion. But Marco, we're almost out of time, and I, I wanted to get uh, your reaction to that. Um, and uh, some, if you don't mm -hmm. mind, I'd like to get some profundities from you, uh, <laughs> sort of, especially in view of the fact that uh, the Verge conference starts tomorrow. So you go from a one-day conference here in Kauai to a two or what is it, a three-day conference in, uh, in Honolulu in The mm -hmm. Verge. And a lot of the people who are here are going to be there. And that's what I get. So we are having a week-long and very you know, diverse mm -hmm. discussion about yeah. energy. And it all seems to me to be a pretty healthy experience. But so, Marco, what, what would you leave with us in terms of the profundity of the whole thing? Well, here's, here's and I'm sorry we don't have time to discuss this because I think it's a really juicy question. Here's something to ponder, Jay, for the two of you. So we have this proposed uh, biomass uh, facility, Huho Nua, here up in Pipikeo, uh, northwest of Hilo. It used to be a power plant that was running on coal until it was shut down a number of years ago. And there is a current uh, docket open. And the, the question before the commission essentially is, there's a, been a quasi-agreement between Helco and Huho Nua to move forward with uh, reopening the plant where there's already been $100 million plus million spent by Huho Nua to, to, to move forward there. And the question before our commission right now is essentially to agree or not uh, to pass or not to approve or not this power purchase agreement which has been submitted to them. And this power purchase agreement would actually, according to Helco's analysis, cause rates to go up. So it would be paying, Helco would be paying on behalf of all, all our ratepayers, all our ratepayers here in the Big Island, essentially preferential pricing uh, to purchase electricity generated by burning biomass. Are we at a point still, because we used to be, are we still at a point where renewable energy generated to, to produce electricity, should we be paying a premium price for that electricity uh, that causes, again, according to one analysis, it causes rates to go up for people? Or, or should we be basing decisions based on the best, cheapest, most cost-effective type of renewable energy? So that's, that's my profundity, I guess, that I'll leave you guys with. Okay, and I want to make a comment before Amina gets to close, <clears throat> and that is, you know, here in Hawaii, there's a, a Kauai, there's Kauai Green Energy, which is a biomass facility. It's German designed and I think German owned. It's in contract with KIUC. It's very successful. It's a very interesting plant. It's high industry and high technology all put together. And I think it's delivering uh, a fair amount of uh, yeah. renewables at a relatively cheap price, no? I think it's 7%, but. I, I, seven percent, right? Seven yeah, percent. Base, or, base load power. Yeah, base load power. So that's pretty good. Uh, and it, and it, it, so with that, you don't necessarily need to worry about the question of whether the renewables are more expensive, because they they don't have to be. It, they, it, it, we, Kauai is sorry paying a, a little bit of a premium for on, on that for Kauai, that bio uh, green mass, energy, yeah. but I think Huhonua is substantially more okay. compared for other renewables. And so I don't think it should be renewables at any price, but there are renewables that are cost competitive, and we need to get back to some form of economic dispatch. Yes, but we also need mm -hmm. to have diversity, don't you agree? Yeah, true. You can't rely on only one thing. Yep. Okay, we're out of time. That's Mina Morita and Marco Mangelsdorf here mm -hmm. on Mina, Marco, me on Monday on energy. I have so enjoyed doing this with you guys. It's fabulous that we can do this from anywhere. Next time, we're going to do it from the South Pole. Yeah, it's Pole. nice yeah. to have you on my home turf. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nina. Thank you, Marco. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, guys. It's been fantastic as always. Yeah. Thank Take you. Take care. Next time soon. Aloha. <laughs>